Today I intend to, uh, well, fulfil a challenge I set myself nearly four years ago when I built this cable, which is just a standard Cat5 cable. I'm using two of the cores and, well, I've added a ground as well. Uh, this connects to a PC and this end connects to my EP Ever Tracer A solar charge controller. And at the end of the video where I made this, I kind of said, well, it shouldn't be too difficult to plug this into a Raspberry Pi or connect it somehow to an Arduino and, you know, create a quick dashboard. And now, like I say, four years later, well, I've actually done that. So here we have an EP Ever dashboard and it's just showing the stats of my 12 volt system using the uh, EP Ever Tracer A um, over the last 24 hours and each of these graphs can be changed. I've set them at the moment to 24 hours so you can see we're getting to 3 o'clock in the day here and uh, the sun has most definitely uh, lost its peak hasn't it but uh, I've created three columns here the solar column here on the left hand side showing the uh, power the watts the voltage of the panel and the current coming in as well the center column shows the battery power voltage and current and uh, a bit further down also the battery temperature which uh, yeah it's not so uh, warm here today eight and a half degrees could be a lot worse though and finally the last column shows the load there's obviously no point showing the load voltage because that's exactly the same as the battery voltage but it does show the load power and the load current so straight away we can see that Hovering over the graphs shows the uh, the measurement that it's recorded. And uh, like I said, it's actually taking a measurement every one minute at the moment and showing 24 hours of those stats. So uh, you may want to change that, and I'll show you shortly how you can change the graph timeline. For instance, for me, probably 12 hours is sufficient because I look at my settings of an evening. So as long as it catches the morning and the evening, 12 hours should be absolutely fine at the moment. Um, looking at the uh, solar power and the battery power of course those graphs look very very similar because this is an MPPT solar charge controller so the vast majority of the solar power should be converted into uh, power watts going into the battery but conversely though of course the solar voltage and battery voltage graphs look very different because of course there is that conversion uh, so therefore you can also see that the uh, solar current, well it's barely got over 1.5 amps today, but the uh, the energy, the current, sorry, going into the battery has almost got up to 2 amps. So we are seeing that MPPT conversion is happening with a voltage on the solar of 14.2 volts and a voltage on the battery of sort of 13 and a half volts. So yeah. That's pretty much the dashboard. Let's uh, show you how it's all put together. So I'm sure that some of you recognize that that flow was created in Node-RED. Now, Node-RED is a programming uh, solution with visual programming where you place in nodes and messages flow through those nodes and you can change them as they, well, move through those nodes. So I'm using... Uh, a Modbus GET node to actually connect to the solar charge controller. And we can see the messages that I'm uh, eventually sending out of this flow. Um, every 60 seconds, this node injects this code here, which uh, selects certain uh, Modbus registers into the Modbus GET node, and then it's sent up here and, uh, well, taken apart and put into various different elements, uh, labelled up. Um, done so we do some maths on it because uh, the data is saved on the tracer or the EPT ever um, solar charge controllers, um, as a whole number it can't have a floating point so uh, for instance uh, the voltage of 13.78 volts actually comes out of the uh, tracer as the 1378 so we need to divide by 100 
And then that number is put into this element here, and that's actually the graph that we saw a moment ago on the uh, the dashboard there. And so, as you can see, these blue uh, nodes here display the solar voltage, solar current, and all those other elements. Um, I'm also building uh, these messages here, which are on the right-hand side and showing up in this debug node here, because eventually I'm sending all these messages via uh, these connections here um, into a um, influx DB. Um, so this is actually sending all that data to a database um, so that I can look at it over a longer period of time because the uh, the information in here is not saved, it is volatile, um, so it's great as a dashboard for showing live stats but it's not so great for showing historical information. So I'm saving everything um, to an influx DB but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to do that. This element could be disabled entirely and uh, therefore it won't send to an influx DB. And of course, if you want to send to an influx DB, you need an influx DB. This, isn't, uh, this doesn't have that functionality within it. It just connects to an external database. But for simplicity, um, similar to the EP Evers e-log solution, um, I'm also sending the stats to a CSV file as well. So you can save the um, historical information straight on a CSV file on the Raspberry Pi. But theory has it you could send those stats to another external system such as perhaps Google Sheets. So you could send the data every minute up to Google Sheets and then you'd have a spreadsheet on Google that you could of course create some graphs over the period that you want. So yeah that CSV file is built here. It injects the time so that that's on each line of the CSV as well. So we're reading the information, we're uh, interpreting it, we're displaying it on a dashboard and we're also saving it and sending it to external sources as well. So uh, yeah, that's all pretty straightforward. EP Ever Solar Charge Controllers do store their own historical data, however, and that's what's happening down here. I'm in, um, collecting that data every six hours. I send this code via Modbus and uh, that message comes in here and uh, this has been set up slightly differently uh, because these registers are all 32-bit. Most of the registers up here are 16-bit so I'm having to use a bit of code here to mangle those, bit, those registers together for want of a better term. So that's all done here and these are all the sort of historical data, the kilowatt hours and if we look on the right hand side we should be able to see, oh well no of course we haven't had a six hour period but if I inject that uh, data and go down here we can see that my tracer A today consumed very little this month well we're at the beginning of the month very little as well but yeah total generated on my tracer a is 102 kilowatt hours um because of course i've only got quite a small system here so yeah that um is in uh, retrieved every six hours and then i'm also sending it to the influx db um not to the csv but of course that could be adapted to put that information in there as well. Eagle eyed viewers may have noticed I have a second flow here which is disabled so if we uh, change to that uh, tab double click and enable it and deploy because every time you make a change you need to deploy those changes uh, this um, is quite similar I've got a way of reading values here. Um, it's uh, sending this code to the Modbus get to get a certain amount of registers, splitting those messages, switching those messages, dividing the uh, resulting number, um, putting it into a dashboard element and uh, also saving it as well inside the flow. And uh, there's also a little bit more down here that does um, another couple of jobs. Now what that is, that allows me to change the settings of my tracer charge controller.
So now when I look at the dashboard, I have another column here, the settings column. And uh, all of these values we saw in that flow, the boost reconnect, the low voltage disconnect, etc, etc. Uh, but these are all some arbitrary values. 9 volts is the lowest you can set them to, so that's what it's showing at the moment because I haven't read those values from my solar charge controller. So if I click read values, now we can see exactly how my tracer A is set up. It's in battery type user mode. I've set it to 170 amp hours. Uh, the high voltage disconnect, the charging limit, the over voltage reconnect. All of these are exactly how I've set up my solar charge controller. Um, down to the equalization duration and that sort of thing. So we can change those results now. We can set that to 15.8 instead of 16 volts. And I can write those values back to my solar charge controller and uh, to confirm that that's been saved well let's read those values in again and yes it is so uh, let's just confirm that again by changing that back to 16 i won't write them this time i'll just read them and uh, yeah that changed back to 15.8 volts so we can prove that that is uh, writing those values to my solar charge controller and reading them from it um, it's worth noting um, that these uh, are all in sort of a hierarchy order. You can't have the charging limit set above the high voltage disconnect, for example. So the highest voltages are set at the top and the lowest voltages are set at the bottom. The discharge limit can't be higher than the low voltage disconnect limit for example so yeah i think this is possibly the only ep ever dashboard out there uh, that's not the official windows client that you are able to actually change all the values on the solar charge controller so yeah i'm pretty pleased with that now it's worth mentioning I have tried the uh, Landstar PWM solar charge controller as well as the Tryron uh, with the RS485 slave module in there and they both work fine with the dashboard along with my Tracer A and Tracer AN solar charge controllers. So every single one I've been able to test I have done and it works perfectly. I've also connected to those solar charge controllers through my eBox Wi-Fi 01 as well as my eBox TCP02, this one being Wi-Fi, that one being, well, normal wired network. I've also tested uh, this third-party uh, USR, um, well, Wi-Fi 2 rs485 adapter and colin hickey's um well homemade esp8266 uh wi-fi to rs485 adapter and all of these connect perfectly well however unfortunately the uh, the thing that inspired this the the cable i haven't yet managed to get working on the uh, Raspberry Pi, whether it's an issue with the CH340 driver or some other issue that I haven't yet identified, yes, yeah, sadly, the actual wire isn't working yet, but that's a work in progress and I'm sure I'll be able to get it working at some point in the future. If anybody has any advice on that, please put it in the comments below. So that's my attempt at an EP Ever dashboard, which connects through various network devices. Not that USB cable yet, but hopefully soon to be. The dashboard is easily adjustable for your needs. It also works on a mobile as well. It'll adjust to the screen. It's adaptive in that regard as well. And it's the only dashboard I'm aware of that allows you to read and set settings on your EP Ever solar charge controller. I'd love to hear about what you think should be added to the dashboard in the comments below. And hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.